a little bit of rain over the last few days now and the pond overflow is running nicely back into the creek that was the dirt out of the creek for a bit the pond is still surprisingly clear even though the rain usually turns it murky military but uh, not this time around for this year one of my projects is going to be renting an excavator at some point and digging this guy out because it's it's really shallow it's landed in some and uh, I want to have it down at sort of three four feet for the critters to have a bit more because if it, if it does freeze heavily this thing will freeze right down to the ground There's the overflow from my spring. I don't know if you can see that there. There we go. There, there it is. I've connected a thousand gallon tank directly to a spring, the underground tank, which feeds that tank, or two thousand gallon tank. And the overflow from that tank goes in there and then into this little creek here that I made and then it goes into into the pond. Now I redirected this creek from up here. It used to go straight down. It used to come out of there and then go straight down across and then back there into the old creek bed this bit here and I filled that in with rocks and clay and then redirected it to go through the pond Doodle wants a rock he likes playing with rocks there you go Doodle So yeah, it's warm today. It's 70 degrees, 1st of January, crazy. I just changed the cards in the trail climb on my food plot up there. That's over that bit there. Got winter rye and stuff in there for the deer. So Doodle is diving. I think the rock went in the water. I don't mind him swimming now, it's warm enough. But for the 1st of January, that's just crazy. We had some pretty heavy winds in the last couple of days. So I, w I just came down here to check that there are no trees down here on the shooting range. And there ain't, by the looks of it, Nope, looks all clear all the way down. Although I do have to take a couple of these down. There's one that, that leaner over there, that's got to go. And then there's a heavy leaner that goes right across there. That's got to go. I'm going to not bother with the ones that are down in the creek because they're going to be a birch to get up the bank that's quite steep here and it goes about, I don't know, 15 feet down that's quite the drop here there's the, there's the creek goes goes into there camera doesn't really pick it out that way but it's quite a, quite a steep drop probably about 15 feet This used to be a logging track. When they logged this this spot, they cut this cut this logging road in here, which is now has become my shooting range. And it was
was all overgrown again. I cleared it out last year. And uh, yeah, Look like, looks like the rain is coming back. So I'll see you later. Happy New Year, everybody. It's a rainy day in East Tennessee. So I've got some empties to fill. 6.5 vendor with let's see let's see with some nozzler bullets ballistic tip 120 grain uh, in here somewhere that one is almost empty and we got another one on it Boxes there we go. They do wrap them well. Sized, primed, ready for powder and bullets. And these I separated from the rest. These are on the last, on the last firing, so I use these for hunting, and I don't mind losing a case. Last use, there we go. We got, uh, let's, I switched this guy on about half an hour ago, so now we can zero it. Now what I use for the Grendel is the Lieber Evolution powder from Hodgkin. Yeah. That's done me pretty good in the in the Grendel. I use 31 and a half grain. Make sure that puppy is closed and it isn't. That could have gone wrong. There we go. Thirty-one and a half grain of that in my rifle shoots just under one MOA, which is good enough for me for hunting. It's not. There we go. Uh, Thirty-one point five. Hmm. Thirty-one point. Come on. 
1.5. Let's get that out of the way. Let's set up the powder funnel -y thing. With a six and a half mil, 6.5 mil. I don't know why I keep dropping stuff. There we go. Put that away. And some dies 6.5 render And a shell holder. There we go. Now we're in business. Pack that out a bit. Yep. That just didn't feel right. over a bit. It's crazy weather. First of January, it's 70 degrees out there and we had some pretty hefty rain showers. Actually, I was going to do this video earlier, but you couldn't hear a thing in here. It, it, was, it was so noisy with the rain clattering on this aluminum roof of this trailer. I couldn't hear myself think, so I thought I'd wait and we do this. We do this between the showers. Yeah, it's 70, 72 degrees, I think, out there. Yep. And every now and again you get a gust of wind come through and then that brings another another fat ass rain cloud and it's yeah it's I went down to the pond earlier on to check if there were any trees down because we had some blows coming in last night. They were pretty, pretty hefty. And I changed the SD card in the trail camera down there at the at the food food plot. We had some. I don't know about a week ago. We had some heavy winds, and it blew the lid off. Uh, I think it's a 30 gallon trash can that we had still half full with bird seed for the bird feeders. So that stuff all got wet. So I took that down last week to the food plot and just tipped it out there and all of it is gone. So I don't know who's been at it, but somebody, somebody's had a good meal out of that lot.
Now I do like these. The SSTs from Hornady, they are a little bit inconsistent. And it's tough to get a to get them to shoot one and only with I've tried different overall lengths, I've tried different powders and stuff and as far as powders go lever lever evolution and Varget are the two that work in that and in these but the lever evolution is easier to get than Varget at the moment so and velocities are about the same I get what do I have uh, 2,343, 2,340 uh, feet per second, which is good enough to open these things up inside. 250, 300 yards, I guess. Um, it's gonna be hard to shoot that far here without taking a, a weed whacker on the hand. So we can hear that. It's not, it's not exactly long range territory. You can do just as well with the 30-30 with peep sights because it's all close in. Close in stuff. As a matter of fact, next, next season, I'm gonna take the pistol out, the 10 millimeter. dog doesn't come along on our walks and I just have Finnegan with me I can keep him close the little dog would chase after everything squirrel deer you name it he's after it bobcat although that bobcat last year that wasn't too impressed of him chasing it they ended ended up switching roles and the bobcat chasing him to watch actually. Uh, Finnegan I can keep close and then we actually see deer and, and, and stuff and squirrels and, 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 and all that good stuff whereas the little dog just forget it you won't see a damn thing. So I can take a a pistol on my belt when I go for a dog walk and probably come back with a deer next year, next season. For here, the Grendel is a is a pretty decent deer round, really. It doesn't have as much meat damage as my like, like the thirty or six and stuff. The heavy, heavier hitters. It's accurate enough. Although I'd I'd probably get at some point a better barrel for it.
30 odd six for here is, is, is over gunning it. My neighbor uses a 270 and I think the same thing applies to it. Of course, it's all fairly close range. said this year I used the 3030 with peak sides and that was fine. It's an easy, easy to carry high for the Winchester model. 94. And that did the trick incidentally with the same powder laser evolution as I'm using in the grand blender. I think I've got a couple of empties. I might just, while I've got the powder in them. In the dispenser, I might just reload those. I think I've got them primed already and done. I'm not quite sure, I'll have a look in a second. So we might just do, do them quick. Didn't shoot many. again Those I, the 3030s I do crimp in the tube magazine. But the Grendel is such a pleasant shooter as well, there's hardly any recoil. I think less even than the 3030. Let's just quickly change change caliber here. Bullets for the 3030. It's a 30 carbine. 150 grain. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, there we go. Hmm. 
and clear, clear, clear. Yeah. And hit the go button. Yeah, set up for the 33rd degree. Mm. Now we need a large rifle primer. Shen holder for the 3030. Large piston. Large rifle primer. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight.
just knife in the camera drawer. Where's that puppy? Good to go. Funny thing about these is they hardly grow. I guess the 3030 is such low pressure round that you don't actually deform them that much. It doesn't take much to resize those guys. And you trim them every once in a blue moon. sighting in the rifle and the deer season. Going by that with what I've got in the box just for 30-30 I can eat venison for the rest of my life and then some. I actually like taking that rifle out for a play every now and again on the range as well so a little dent in that shoulder. Tiny little dent. You'll see it in the light. But that dent will come out when I pull the trigger for sure. surprised with Winchester brass so when I bought the rifle I got a few boxes of ammo with it and that happened to be Winchester brass Winchester ammo. Otherwise, I wouldn't have bothered with this stuff. I bought some uh, two, two, three Winchester Super Short Magnum brass from Winchester because Starline didn't have any at that time so I bought two two bags of Winchester brass and a third of them on the new brass 
at split necks. So I got in touch with Winchester. And then they wanted pictures and this and that and the other. And I just didn't bother. Didn't bother with it in the end because it, I just, nah. <laughs> It's, I've, got, I've got better things to do so since then I I mean I was, I was never really fond of this stuff from the get go but since then I've, I've said Winchester Brass no thank you now I realised that it probably isn't very easy to form the uh, 223 super short magnum getting that neck down to such a small, but they want enough money for this stuff so they can have somebody look at it before they put it in the bag and obviously they don't. This Levi Revolution powder is so fine. They should call it dust powder, not ball powder. It's, it's hilarious. There, done. I do like that guy. Just for when you're doing a few rounds or like now with a, a few other the Grendel and then a couple of 30-30 luckily with the same powder but yeah it's, it's just just setting that up takes way longer especially if you have powders that have a big difference in, in, in the throw weight yeah. then you have to crank this thing miles and, and stuff and, and with that guy it's just yeah it's easy it's great for lazy people like me there we have that those back in the box Most of the firewood cut. Now I just got it down another couple of trees because there's still a, a divot in there that I want to fill up. And then we'll have enough for next year. But uh, yeah, got it all chopped, split, cut up, all done yesterday. Just as well because look at it now, it's a mud bath. It's been raining pretty good last night. And the wind has picked up, as you can probably hear. Bird! He doesn't like birds. He likes his chickens, but he doesn't like birds of prey. Yeah, that one ain't gonna land here now, is he? He's coming back, Finn. Bird! You 
Don't keep an eye on that guy. Or a boy just for that matter, but he doesn't know the difference. But it's warm. Still 70 degrees. Blowing a hoolie, but it's warm. I got soaked a couple of times today. It's down at the shooting range with the tractor looking for down trees after that wind yesterday. And uh, yeah, <laughs> got rained on pretty hard. So yeah, nice day though. Between the showers is beautiful. Don't really want to stay inside. And I'll see you later, guys.